Uncovering the Secrets of Gold's Journey Gold is far more than a symbol of wealth or a material of aesthetic value. It is a geological product shaped by cosmic events, deep earth processes, and surface dynamics operating over billions of years. The journey of gold represents one of the most intricate material histories known in earth science, linking astrophysics, geochemistry, tectonics, and sedimentology into a single continuous narrative. Understanding how gold forms, migrates, concentrates, and survives requires examining each stage of this journey in detail, from its atomic birth to its final accumulation in natural deposits. 1. Cosmic Formation and the Arrival of Gold on Earth The story of gold begins long before the Earth itself existed. Gold is classified as a heavy element, meaning it cannot form through normal stellar fusion. Instead, it originates during rare, high-energy cosmic events such as neutron star collisions and certain types of supernova explosions. In these environments, extreme neutron flux allows atomic nuclei to rapidly capture neutrons, producing heavy elements through the R process. Following these events, gold atoms were dispersed throughout interstellar space as part of cosmic dust clouds. These clouds later coalesced to form the solar system. During Earth's accretion, gold became incorporated into the planet's early structure along with iron, nickel, and silicate material. However, Earth's internal differentiation dramatically altered gold's distribution. As the planet heated and melted, dense elements migrated toward the core. Gold, being siderophile, followed iron downward. The gold present in Earth's crust today represents only a small residual portion that escaped core sequestration or was later reintroduced through mantle-derived processes. 2. Gold in the Crust, Scarcity and Dispersion Within the Earth's crust, gold is exceptionally rare. Average crustal concentrations are typically below 5 parts per billion. At such levels, gold would be invisible and economically meaningless without geological mechanisms capable of concentrating it. Gold rarely forms its own minerals. Instead, it occurs as native gold, alloys, or microscopic inclusions within sulfide minerals such as pyrite and arsenopyrite. Its chemical behavior is controlled by temperature, pressure, redox conditions, and fluid composition. The fundamental geological challenge is not creating gold, but moving and concentrating it from dispersed atomic states into macroscopic accumulations. This process requires fluid mobility, structural pathways, and energy sources capable of sustaining long-lived hydrothermal systems. 3. Hydrothermal Fluids and Gold Transport Mechanisms The primary agent responsible for gold movement in the crust is hydrothermal fluid. These fluids originate from magmatic intrusions, metamorphic dehydration reactions, or deep circulating meteoric waters heated at depth. Under high temperature and pressure, water becomes an efficient solvent capable of transporting metals. Gold is transported in solution as complexes, commonly bonded with sulfur or chlorine. The stability of these complexes depends on precise physico-chemical conditions. Even minor changes in temperature, pressure, pH, or oxidation state can destabilize gold complexes, triggering precipitation. Structural features such as faults, shear zones, and fractures act as conduits for fluid flow. These structures localize gold deposition by repeatedly channeling mineralized fluids through the same pathways. Over time, incremental deposition builds economically significant gold concentrations. 4. Formation of Primary Gold Deposits Primary gold deposits form within bedrock as a direct result of geological processes. These deposits are diverse but share a reliance on fluid transport and structural control. Orogenic gold deposits develop during continental collision and mountain building. Deep crustal fluids migrate upward along major fault systems, depositing gold in quartz veins under high-pressure conditions. Epithermal deposits form at shallow crustal levels, typically associated with volcanic activity. These systems produce gold-rich veins and breccias, often accompanied by silver and other base metals. Intrusion-related gold systems are linked to granitic magmatism and involve large-scale fluid circulation around intrusive bodies. Carlin-type deposits represent a unique model where gold occurs as submicroscopic particles disseminated within carbonate or siliciclastic host rocks. Each deposit type reflects a specific tectonic setting, thermal regime, and fluid chemistry, emphasizing the geological complexity of gold formation. Channel Membership Notice Join Button Segment at this stage in the discussion, it is important to highlight that the join button on this channel is currently active. 
channel members receive access to in-depth geological breakdowns, extended educational content, exclusive posts, and early releases of upcoming videos. Membership directly supports the creation of detailed, research-focused material and allows the channel to continue producing high-quality geology content. 5. Weathering Processes and Gold Liberation Once primary gold deposits are uplifted and exposed at the surface, they enter a new phase of their journey. Chemical and physical weathering gradually break down host rocks. Unlike most minerals, gold is chemically inert and remains largely unchanged. As surrounding minerals decompose, gold particles are released and concentrated as residual material. This process is slow but continuous, operating over thousands to millions of years. The resistance of gold to oxidation and dissolution allows it to survive long after other components are removed. Weathering transforms gold from a structurally bound mineral into a mechanically transported particle, setting the stage for secondary deposit formation. 6. Placer Deposits and Sedimentary Concentration Secondary gold deposits, particularly placer deposits, form through sedimentary processes. Due to its high density, gold behaves differently from most sediment particles. Flowing water preferentially removes lighter materials while concentrating heavy minerals. Rivers, streams, and alluvial systems become natural gold concentrators. Gold accumulates in specific sedimentary traps such as river bends, bedrock irregularities, and gravel layers. Over time, repeated flooding events enhance concentration. Placer deposits were historically the first gold sources exploited by humans because they required minimal technology. Despite their surface simplicity, placer systems provide valuable clues to the location of upstream primary deposits. 7. Human Exploration and Scientific Interpretation Modern gold exploration relies heavily on understanding gold's geological journey. Geologists use structural analysis, geochemical anomalies, alteration patterns, and geophysical data to predict where gold may be concentrated. Beyond economic exploration, gold deposits are studied as natural laboratories. Fluid inclusions reveal temperature and pressure conditions of formation. Isotopic systems provide insights into fluid sources and tectonic environments. Mineral textures record deformation histories. Gold thus becomes a tool for understanding earth processes rather than merely a commodity. 8. Gold as a record of Earth's evolution. Every gold deposit contains a layered history of geological events. From deep crustal metamorphism to surface erosion, gold records the interaction of multiple earth systems. Studying gold contributes to broader knowledge of plate tectonics, crustal growth, and fluid evolution. Gold's durability allows it to persist through multiple geological cycles, making it one of the most reliable tracers of long-term Earth history. Conclusion The journey of gold is a continuous transformation shaped by cosmic forces, deep Earth dynamics, surface processes, and human interaction. Its rarity is not defined by its cosmic abundance, but by the extraordinary geological conditions required to concentrate it. Gold stands as both a scientific archive and a material resource, linking the origins of the universe to the evolution of Earth and civilization itself.